Hi, in this video I'm going to give an overview of Raylib's Camera 2D and how and why you would want to use it. There's no code in this video, it will just be an overview of the concepts and thus it will be applicable to any language that is supported by Raylib. So what exactly is a Camera 2D? In the scope of game development, a camera is a thing that does a transformation from world space to screen space. In Raylib, a Camera 2D provides these types of transformations for 2D viewports. World space is a very arbitrary concept. It just means that you are defining all the things in your game in some arbitrary space. It is not defined relative to any particular screen, origin, or resolution. It's just things in space, relative to whatever you want them to be relative to. World space is great for game worlds because it's not bound to anything specific and you can define it in a way that works best for whatever kind of game you're making. In contrast, screen space is very strict. It is the pixel coordinates on your screen, starting from the upper left and going to the lower right. It is fixed to the resolution of the rendering window and is directly tied to the, the device that you're rendering to. The Camera 2T defines the transformation to take content from your arbitrary world space into the fixed and strict screen space. You can think of it as a window into your world. It allows you to show some or all of the world in, a in the window using the transform settings. If your world is bigger than what can fit on the screen, the camera will let you bring different parts of it into view. It's like a view into your world that you can move, rotate, and stretch to fit your needs. There are five things in Raylib that let you work with a 2D camera. First is the actual camera 2D structure. This is where all the information about the camera goes. The next two important things are begin mode 2D and end mode 2D. These are functions that are used inside the begin and end drawing loop to tell Raylib when it is time to use the camera. All drawing that is done in between the begin and end of the mode 2D will be transformed by the camera that you pass into the begin function. These modes can be used to draw to the screen or a render texture, uh, or even both if you need. The last two functions on this list are used to transform points from world to screen or screen to world uh, when you need for very special cases. Most of this has to do with handling mouse clicks on the screen and turning it into a world position so that you can know what thing was clicked on. So if we look at the fields of the camera 2D, it's very simple. It only has four fields. The first field is a vector which is the offset. Uh, this is where in screen space you want the window origin to be. The next is another vector. It is the target point. This is a world space point where you want to map the origin to. Uh, we'll go over this in just a sec. Next we have the rotation, which is how much you want to rotate the camera. And last we have a zoom, how much you want to scale the camera. So the origin field is used to move the origin of the window that you are drawing to. By default, the origin is in the upper left-hand corner. Setting the offset to a new screen space location will move the window origin to that spot when the camera is being used. It is very common to move the window origin to the center of the screen by using half the width and height. This makes it very easy to center things on the window. The window origin should be relatively static. It is in screen space, so it should only be set or changed when the screen size changes. The target point defines the position in world space that you want mapped to the window origin. By default, this is 0, 0 in the world. Since the world space is arbitrary, we are not limited to drawing our map with just positive coordinates. We can use negative ones. Here on the left, we have a world with the origin at the center. Our world is larger than the screen, and we have set up the camera origin to be the center of the screen. With this setup, we can see that the camera shows us our spaceship at 0, 0 in the center of our screen. World items that are too far away to be seen on the screen will not show in the window. If we move our target point over to X minus 100 and Y minus 100, we can see that the view on the screen follows, centering the world point on our screen. This is how we can move our camera around the world. It is very common to have the target point for the camera follow the player around the world. This gives the effect on screen of the world moving around the player and keeping them centered on the screen. Because we are using a camera, we don't have to move every object on, in screen space to achieve this effect. 
We can just draw our world the same way every frame and move the camera target as needed. Next we have rotation. This rotates the world during the transformation when it's drawn. The rotation will, be, will always use the target point as the pivot and map that rotation to the screen. This is useful if you want the world to rotate around your player. It is not needed if you want to just make your player rotate in a fixed world. Lastly, we have the zoom field. This is a scale factor that is applied to everything that is drawn. When you set up a camera 2D structure, you must set the zoom to be non-zero. If you initialize the structure to everything in zero, the zoom value will be zero, and this is not valid. If the zoom is zero, nothing will be drawn on the screen. A zoom value of one means that for every one world unit, there is one pixel on the screen. If you define a zoom value greater than one, you will zoom into the world and make each world unit be more than one pixel on the screen. A zoom of two, as shown here, will make everything in the view twice as large and show less of the world on the screen. Zoom values less than one will zoom out from the world and make everything smaller. A zoom of one half, as shown here, will make everything half size and show more of the world on the screen. Using these fields, you have full control over the 2D transformation that is applied to your world when drawing. The last thing we have are two functions that can be used to transform specific positions between world and screen spaces. Get world to screen 2D takes a world space point and converts it into a screen space. This is useful for checking to see if a world point will be drawn or is outside the window or figuring out where on screen something will be drawn so that you can do something like a HUD or um, some sort of overlay, like maybe a player name or health bars. Get screen to world 2D does the exact opposite transformation. It takes a screen space point and returns a world space equivalent. This is very useful for taking the mouse position, which is always in screen space, and computing where it will be in world space. This is so that you can find out what world items are clicked on or hovered. As you can see, the camera 2D is very useful for 2D games and is used quite often. It provides an easy way to change the window origin. It's essential for handling maps that are larger than the screen, allowing panning or keeping the player on screen. It is also a very easy way to scale all drawing done on the screen. Retro style games can use a camera 2D to scale all drawing by two, three, or four times normal size to make the smaller sprites fit larger displays. And because Raylib uses OpenGL and everything can be defined using floating point numbers, you can even get sub-pixel accuracy for smooth motion even on low-res images. The camera is also pretty much the only way to handle full screen rotations. It is also a very powerful tool for dealing with devices with different screen sizes or resolutions. You can simply compute a zoom factor to fit what is important for your game on the screen and let the camera do the work of transforming your world. You will find several examples of camera, camera 2D in the Raylib and Raylib Extras examples that are online. I'll link a few below in the description. I hope that this has been helpful. If it was, please give this video a like. I try to make more videos when I can, so please subscribe to be notified when new ones are available. And feel free to join us on the Raylib Discord link that you see on your screen.